now, here's your hosts, The League Dad, Kevin, Mitchell, and Alistair. Welcome to the All In Podcast. Uh, we're going to be doing a nice episode here, doing 2024 uh, gameplay preview. Uh, there's a lot of changes to League, and we're just going to look them over and give our thoughts. Um, Alistair is here, uh, joining me. How you been, man? Uh, what's what's going on? Uh, chilling, honestly. Been uh, really busy with school, but aside from that, a lot of league. Makes sense, yeah. Um, school school can be like that. Uh, I'm doing good. I just did an episode yesterday, so probably don't have much to update on it. <laughs> um, but yeah, have you gotten a chance to play any of the PBE or look through the notes or anything like that? I have... I okay. have through most of it. Nice, nice. And any any PvE gameplay? No, no. I have not played any. I've just been playing solo queue. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, I have played some PvE. There was a funny bug on it, which was um, kind of cool and stupid, where there's an item called Experimental Hex Plate, where it reduces your ulti cooldown. If you bought and sold it and then undo it, you could permanently reduce your ulti cooldown. So... My games were filled with Karthus with like 15 second ulti cooldowns. Um, yeah, they just fixed it yesterday, the bug. So that's kind of funny. <laughs> but uh, otherwise, um, yeah, what do you want to start? Do you, uh, What kind of stuff do you want to talk about with the uh, 2024 gameplay changes? Um, I mean, I think we just start from the top and go from there. I think maybe map. Maybe All right, yeah, let's look at the map. Um, so... They added this new Void Grub, Void Might thing. Uh, it's like a mini objective before Rift Herald. It's kind of cool. Um, it's you know it's got three bodies. It looks very demonic and weird and voidy, and it shoots out little babies. Um, it's gonna make top lane a bit more relevant. Um, I don't know. What are your? You can just give some like quick thoughts on what you think on this addition. Um, I really like that Rift Herald won't spawn until after plates. I think it's gonna be a really nice change. Um, what I'm disappointed about is that they're adding this while still keeping Hallbreaker in the game. I think Hallbreaker should be removed. Then you can you can have this as like a tower pushing contested type thing. Uh, I think the item's very uninteractive, but I won't get into that can of worms right now. Yeah. Um, but overall, I think this is a very cool concept, especially the idea that you know you don't have to take all three of them at once. You can just take one and walk away and take the win. So I I we'll have to see how it plays out. Uh, obviously, I haven't played PBE, like I said, but I think it's it seems like it'll be a healthier way and a more interesting way of playing the early game. Yeah, um, Hellbreaker is still in the game, but the item is totally different. Uh, it's like way worse. Um, it's like it works kind of like Dead Man's Play. You have to like be in combat for a little bit, and then you get a bonus damage like auto attack. Uh, it doesn't just give you like a uh, bunch of resists and uh, stats for being out of combat, but it does buff your cannon minion. It's a pretty weird item. I tried it. It seems terrible now, so I, I think it might be fine. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> um, but yeah, otherwise, um, I did play some PB. I played uh, around this objective. Oh, Alistair left. I'll just keep talking. Um, <laughs> but um, the item or the what is this thing called? I got so distracted. The Void Grubs and Void Might thingies. These guys were, um, I don't know, they're super easy to kill. So if you're an early game jungler and you know you can win the 1v1, you can kind of take these and just like tank them, take no damage. Um, you don't have to like use your big cooldowns to take them. You can just auto attack them, hit them like for most junglers that are a good early game. So they're kind of a free objective. Um, they don't give a lot of, oh, Alistair's back. What's up, man? Um, oh, school internet. Yeah. <laughs> I was just talking about how um, the objective is pretty easy to kill. Um, doesn't do, do it a lot of damage, and uh, it dies pretty quickly, and it gives a decent amount of golden XP. Um, so I imagine early game junglers, they'll just kind of rule over this one. If you know you win the 1v1, you can take this and not even be worried about getting it jumped on. You won't lose HP that much HP. So kind of a weird objective like that. Um, also, the reward is, like, decent, but it's kind of underwhelming. Like, it gives a passive to everybody, makes them deal more damage to turrets, but it's, like, okay. It doesn't seem like it, it does a ton of damage, so 
Uh, yeah, it's, it's not a bad objective. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if they make any changes to it. Um, like you said, Rift Herald, uh, it spawns at 14 minutes now after, I believe, and then you can actually jump into it. Uh, you can ride it. Uh, <laughs> uh, you, you think you're going to be riding it a lot as an ADC? You're going to jump in there? <laughs> Um, all the time playing Tristana, hundred percent. Oh yes, nice Malphite cosplay. <laughs> oh yes. Um, yeah, it's kind of an interesting change. It's a little goofy. If you play Nexus Blitz, it's like the sled, uh, where you can kind of jump in and like fly around and run into things. Um, it has some weird hip hitboxes. It's pretty easy to kill yourself with it. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, overall thoughts on then on the Rift Herald and the Void Grubs. I think uh, I kind of like it. You, yeah, you know, I, I'm excited to see where it goes. Um, yeah. Any any other thoughts, Alistair? No, honestly, not really. I I, I like the changes uh, so far. Very cool. No, me too. I like the changes. Um, yeah, we'll see how many people int when they jump into the Rift Herald. Uh, oh, a lot. Yeah, uh, and then they changed up the Baron um, so that 20 minutes you get um, like a bunch of changes to all the jungle monsters. So like your red buff and blue buff, now everybody gets it. Uh, Scuttle's a bit more dankier. Uh, and then Baron itself has a bunch of new attacks and it can have one of three different maps like states. So that's pretty weird. Didn't expect that change. Um but kind of creative. I think it's cool. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. What do you think about that? Especially considering you play a lot of like semi-pro amateur stuff that this is going to change your Baron setups a lot. Yeah, I I personally really like that Baron's getting new attacks and stuff like that. I think it's a really cool design because most of the time Baron just kind, kind of comes down to can I kill it in time? Like can a team kill it in time? Like Baron doesn't really do a lot of damage. The attacks are easy to dodge if you need to even bother dodging them. The only one you really need to dodge is the knockup. Yeah. And other than that, you just kind of like have someone face tank and move on. But I don't know what the damage is like. But just you know, more having more abilities that Baron has that you might need to worry about uh, is really cool. I think the map changes with Baron. I mean, no, the map changes overall, but the map change, especially with Baron, uh, will definitely make things interesting especially you know if you if you have a really good corridor team fight comp and then you know you have the baron where it makes two corridors you're you're going to be really happy so i think it'll be it'll be interesting yeah it's it's going to be definitely weird i think it's going to at least for pro play it's going to skew it harder for red and blue side right i feel like the one that i'm kind of showing on the screen with the corridor like you're talking about seems way better for red side than blue side um and then the other two ones are kind of more normal, and they just seem like, you know, the normal, usual, just good for blue side kind of position. Um, so kind of interesting that they went for that. Um, we'll see how it plays out. Um, positioning is going to be weird. Um, yeah, I mean, we can go to the other map changes. It, it's like so many changes, it's hard to really give like a thorough opinion on. But the top change is pretty big. Um, top lane red side is like totally different. It's pretty weird honestly like i've tried playing top lane and going back to lane i like forget that i can't go this way and i'll like miss xp and creeps and stuff it, it it is weirdly you don't have as much access from red side top lane to like the river but you're also safer from getting ganged so i'm not really sure how i feel about it but it's kind of interesting um yeah any any what, what do you think about this uh, I'm kind of mirroring it right what do, you, what do you think about that yeah um I don't play a lot of top lane. I think this is kind of what top laners want, to be honest. They want to be left alone. Uh, this will kind of encourage that, especially with the the push being pushed back. Uh, so you can see the jungler coming from farther up. Yep. Obviously, if you're standing under the enemy tower, it won't really matter. But I, said, I, I don't have a lot of thoughts on it because I don't really play top lane, so... Yeah, I mean, it is um, it's kind of like mirrored in opposite way to what they did to bot lane too. But for top lane, it's definitely what I noticed harder to gank um, from all angles. Um, red side is like really significantly harder to gank, and I think blue side you get a little more um, warning because the bush is in the the middle of the river. Super weird, uh, yeah, but it does. Rest in peace, the Tyrus flash. 
Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe you can do a, still another flash over the fat part. I've actually never tried. Um, that's something that actually is interesting to comment about. You'll, you'll probably notice this too once you actually play on the map, is um, if you're uh, playing a champion with a short dash, a lot of the walls are like way different. Like you dash and you have to change how you dash and some of them you can't dash in the same way. It's I was playing Fiora and like not dashing over walls that I thought I could dash over. It was pretty weird. Um, yeah. Also, I feel like this is favored for blue side if they want to go into um, the river. Like it, it's like a slightly bigger opening for blue side to get into the river. They It feels like it's way easier to roam and like join for like Scuttle Crab or something like that. So for sure. It's interesting change. I feel like it's more favored for blue side, but uh, whatever. Um, jungle. Okay, this is just the bot river, right? Um, this picture of bot river. Yeah, this is this is way different. Like playing around bot lane has become way different for a jungler. I felt it. Um, this wall here is like a big deal. Uh, whoever has vision of the river uh, or the inner area. Um, you just like can't walk in the river. You'll get rained hell on, <laughs> uh, especially if you're playing against like anything with range. Um, so pretty interesting change. Uh, what are your thoughts on, yeah, you know, this little map section here? Um, I don't know to be honest with you. Uh, I think the, I think this is gonna be a really, I think this part of the map is going to really show the difference between the really good supports and the like decent supports. Just controlling vision because it's going to be different. The way you have to set up your wards now, there's less bushes. The bushes have been moved. Walls have been moved. The way you can, you know, really get that pixel perfect line of sight that you need, uh, that will really change up. I think how uh, dragon fights go. Yeah. I also think that it's definitely nice uh, as a bot laner if you're playing on red side. And if your team wants to fight a dragon that realistically your your wave state doesn't really want you or like allow you to, but you have to fight it, uh, otherwise your like teammates will leave the game. Um, it's much easier for you to walk into and contest this dragon because you don't have to walk all the way around. The yeah. you have a much more direct way through and a much more direct way out after winning or losing the fight or running away from the fight. So I think that that's really my main thoughts on it. Yeah, I think that that's super. I, I agree with that. Yeah, uh, definitely. Like bot lane, uh, red side bot lane walking to river is much much easier than than before. Um, I think before on the on the current map, um, you could kind of get trapped there. Like you just could not participate if there wasn't a blast cone. Um, so yeah, pretty interesting. Uh, I will also say though, like if you're if whoever gets control of this little like triangle brush near red side bot terror kind of like owns the entire river like if red side controls this little bush uh it can be really hard for blue side to like walk anywhere in the river because then they kind of control the entire side next to this wall ridge thing and then you can get shot from like the other side and you can it's like scary to walk into this bush and stuff um but if blue side controls this it feels like they can get the entire bot jungle control because Red side can't even walk in until they unless they go all the way from above, right? So it, it, it seems like it's more extreme, like who gets control of this bot side river. Um it, it it's like hard it's easier to take to keep it, I think, uh, from what I've kind of seen. But uh we'll see how pro play develops and how players play around it. Um there's also this little ridge for blue side, uh the blue buff too. The different save you can't fully see here, but um yeah, it just makes it all so different. It's weird. Like, vision is different cut off. You can, like, hide in this thing. People have hide hidden there and stuff. It's it's very interesting. Um, all right, well, let's, let's move on to mid lane here. Um, big changes to mid lane. It is way wider. Way, way wider. And then the part, um, like, next to the turret for uh, blue side above and red side below is, like, super weird. Like, if you're in mid lane, you cannot hover like this side like you just get like pooped on they people just hide in here and just kill you even though you're under tower that's been my experience like I, I, there's no way to if you get surrounded in mid lane like you just kind of effed so it's kind of interesting any any what are your thoughts on opening this map up in mid lane uh i like it i think it allows again this i think this is really going to show the difference between the really good supports and the like 
decent supports. Uh, playing for this, like mid dives, feel much more realistic now. Um, and it's it feels nice that it won't just be like a Cinder and Oriana. They blow up the wave and they get Cinder to the tower, and there's nothing you can do about it. Like you can actually, you know, I feel like you can threaten mid a lot more. And it also does go back to the same idea where obviously mirrored sides, blue has easier going top side, red has easier time going bot side. But having just the opportunity to rotate to uh, river feels really nice. Um, I can imagine just. Again, you want to help with Scuttle Crab, but you're pushed in. You have a much more direct route and a much safer route. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I, I definitely think for those routes, it, it's it is like skewed though, right? Bot side or blue side has an easier time going up top lane. Red side is easier side going bot lane. But then yep. also, it's easier to get ganked. It's like easier to go if you're on red side. It's easier to I feel like to die from uh, top side, the blue mid turret, but you, it's not as easy to dive from bot lane if you're red side. It, man, this language is hard. <laughs> well, because generally you'd have your jungler come from top side, and you'd have your support hex flash over raptors. Yeah, I think. Um, I mean, that's that's an angle for sure. That's an angle for sure. Um, yeah, it, it it's all weird. I think. I think for yeah, it's just this is like weirdly the most convenient and the most dangerous place. Like this little weird corridor next to the turret. Um, definitely getting ganked. Um, Getting ganked in the early game for mid lane is like way harder though. I like because um, the bushes are pushed back and because there's so much extra space. Like jungler shows up and you have to be really like not paying attention and shoved up to actually die to a gank in mid lane uh, from like you know one of these middle parts. But definitely I think dives have gotten easier though. So yeah, interesting how they made those changes. Um, we'll see how it plays out. You know, I think for the most part uh, early game weak mages have a better time like not getting just shafted by like a cc combo <laughs> you know so um that's nice but then like you said also maybe in like the early mid game stage like an oriana or Cinder or whatever they can't like afk under turret like it is actually easier to set up dives on the actual turret if you have like three three plus people so the changes there and then this is a look at bot lane we kind of already talked about a lot of the changes with the uh bush but this is what it looks like Red side is just so weird for bot lane. I don't know. This bush is right there. Like, it's so easy to get ganked. I feel like if you're standing here and you don't have control of this bush, um, give give super quick thoughts on it. I mean, we kind of already talked about it a little bit, but now you're looking at it. So, I mean, it's yeah, it's just gonna be rough. I mean, playing a lot of the time playing red side AD carry feels worse just for the reason that generally on blue side you can get like, especially in competitive you just get slammed by like caitlin lux Callista, renata like a super aggro bot lane most of the time uh red side can't really answer it for the most part and now even if you do counter it and you're pushed in you now have a very a much easier way to get ganked so i feel like I feel like the meta, and I could be very wrong in saying this, my prediction is it's going to be very uh, roam-heavy mid laners, and it's just going to be like constant four-man bot and a lot of dragon play, especially because there's there's less of an objective top lane to take, because Harold doesn't spawn until 14. You're going to want to take those grubs, and you're going to make your way bot lane, you're going to get your bot lane ahead, you're going to rotate your bot lane top lane for the Rift Herald uh, when that spawns, and you're going to blow up when, open the map that way, and it's going to be so much easier to do that on both sides, rather than just having a uh, red side gank from all the way behind. Hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's. Um, yeah, I, I can see that. Um, I don't. I think roaming mids. It could be the thing if it's like a roaming assassin mid that could be a thing. Otherwise, it's like the mage items are so strong. I feel like there's a lot of value in just the mage just sitting mid lane too. Um, I mean, what I mean is, I don't mean like TF exclusively i mean like you're going to pick mid laners that can ro that can clear the wave they can get prior really easily and then roam like type thing i also think yeah, galio is very strong we'll definitely see galio in the new season i think but i also think we will see a lot of lethality assassins and i think the we'll get to it but i think the ad carry meta won't actually be a crit meta i think it's going to be a lethality meta so the the, ch the champs are going to be spiking much earlier yeah, and then well. Leth Lethality did get changed to be much stronger earlier as well. Um, but before we go there, last comment I have to say about Red Side, because most of the changes are for Red Side, is um, it is easier to get ganked from this little tribush river, but I think it's harder to get surrounded. Like, you know how some of those ganks where, um, 
like you get com- like you're you're too in bot lane you get completely dove surrounded like i think it's harder to actually get surrounded you can run away back sure. up For so sure. so that is a difference in that so pros and cons um infernal drake change is super weird it like leaves a bunch of like crap on the ground you can pick up i actually haven't seen it uh played it yet i've just seen videos of it um but it gives a bunch of damage kind of a fun mini game but also i can imagine if you have a shitty computer your 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 screen is just gonna be going crazy uh, <laughs> um yeah and i guess we can kind of get into the items so there's a shit ton of items so i don't want to do all the items so we can kind of just like look at each section and kind of give some like quick thoughts on them um and if you want to read all the items you know the our viewers the the the, the articles out there right so you can check it out but let's go to support item um alistair's favorite it's uh it's it's not 40 gold it's 400 gold but um yeah did you read the uh support item changes it's like now you can do uh spell thieves and uh targons on the same item it's pretty crazy yeah i didn't read all the way through it but i understand for the most part how it works yeah um and also through the patch rundown or like preseason rundown from freak um mm. i think it's i think that's a nice change i mean I, I don't think it really makes much of a difference if you want to be fully honest with you um but and again i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna play the same sad song that i'm always gonna play i think right leaning into the idea that supports are can do damage as well and instead of like actually being support champions is really cringe i think it's really bad for the game overall (laughs) um not even like as a thing that like laning against it it's just the amount of times i've played a game where one support picks xerath and they win lane but they just lose the game anyways because the enemy team picks rel or something like that and they can just they're just more useful um and i mean i don't think anyone really enjoys watching worlds and it's Varus ash versus caitlin callista or something like that it's not entertaining uh in my opinion i think especially because the way that a lot of the game is uh balanced around for example ad carry obviously it was my bread and butter my role is balanced around having peel and having a support and then my support just decides to pick velkaz and then just doubles down on our weakness in the bot lane, but as a team, and then we just kind of lose the game because they have peel for our damage and we have none. Yeah, but I think I think it's just it, it's bad for individual teams in solo queue and in competitive unless you can play it properly, which obviously like SKT can. But I think it's just unhealthy for the balance of the game in general. But yeah, I'm not gonna keep riffing on that because I've talked about it enough. I don't. Unfortunately, I don't. I, I don't think these changes change that. In fact, I think it makes no, it they're, worse. They're, no, no, they're leaning into it. They, right? Yeah. Or uh, Freak, Freak said this, and I, oh, I, think, I, it's, I think it's bad. That, that's, yeah. why I was, that's why I went on about it. Gotcha, yeah. But, they yeah, they are definitely like leaning into it. I feel like it's better to have a carry support. Uh, I think some of the, um, whatever these augments things are called, I think some they do a shit ton of damage. Uh, the damage one is really strong. Um and uh yeah there's two different damage ones right that are pretty good yeah. uh also i think that um from what i've seen uh the the way that you get your support gold bounty or whatever it, it does accelerate you like i I've, I've noticed supports uh finish their quest way way earlier because if you can't sit around and um like a ranged champion now they can poke you and stuff with with your spell thief's charge or they can just kill the canyon minion too, and like I feel like you can be more efficient and get your um, quest done earlier and faster. And that's just something I've noticed is the quests are done much much earlier uh, when playing yeah. support. So yeah, support spike earlier. Um, you know we're living in a support world, honestly. <laughs> um, I mean we have been for a while. Like I don't want ardent sensor meta at all. I was miserable, but I'm tired of losing. A couple hundred LP every week just to dodging. Yeah. Because they pick Seraphine and then we decide to pick like Senna and then we just lose in champ select. Yeah, I'd, uh, totally. Yeah, that's that's a crazy ball lane matchup. Totally. Yeah, but um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I don't know if it's going to change because also I think we're definitely going to get more mage supports too because the mage items are very, very strong. 
Uh, we can get the itemization now. They removed a, a lot of um, they removed a lot of mage items and they added a ton. But for the most part, what I've noticed is the mage items do a ton of damage. Each one does a crap ton. They all have like 90 AP plus. They're all about 3,000 gold. So on average, you're I think for mage items, you're probably getting more AP per item and paying slightly less in general. Uh, to uh, and you're getting less health though. Uh, so I think that is the trade-off. But all the passives for the new mage items are really insane. Like some of the, like this deals. A ton of damage. The storm surge item, uh, the um, yeah, the caster's companion is like the new Ludens. I feel like it does a ton of damage too. Um, Malignants, if you have ultimate ultimate stuff, all does a ton of like all these items that they added do so much damage. So um, yeah, any any thoughts on the mage items in general, and um, any any thoughts on that? Yeah, in that area. Um, I think you've pretty much said what needs to be said for the most part to be honest with you i think yeah. the items that they removed were either unbalanceable or just bad like crown i mean i mean i think crown is only bad because they had to change it it is actually like for pro play at least like that was an unbalanceable mid lane item I think. for sure i think i think crown was i think crown was a bait item for most of its existence because my like if you look at most assassins they're not like they kill you in half a second. It's that they, like, if you look at Zed, he can just W E U, wait for the shield, and then ult you like pretty easily. Yeah, so, I mean, a lot of assassins are like that. Talon can sit in his ult. Akali can sit in shroud. Diana has to wait for her ult to pop down to really do damage. So I, I think it was for the most part a bait item. I, th I think Frost broken. I think for yeah, Everfrost is definitely broken, especially in pro play. But I think for solo queue, you can definitely make that argument for Crown. It's not good doing assassins. I don't actually think like for pro play, Crown is ever that good for assassins. It was good at like stopping Jace Q. Like EQ, <laughs> like that's what it was used yeah. for. Like it's it kind of departed pretty far from what Crown was supposed to be used for. Um, but uh, another interesting thing is uh, I think a lot of players are going to be happy about this is that. No, no more stopwatch. It's a big deal. You have to buy this uh, Seeker's Arm Guard. Um, it has a stopwatch passive, uh, one-time use. It's 1,600 gold, and you have to fully commit to buying a Seeker's Arm Guard that only goes into Zonia's, right? So you can't buy a stopwatch, 750 gold, sell it, not care, or build into GA. You have to buy AP in this big-ass item if you want the stopwatch effect. So I think that's a big deal for pro play. It's a big deal for lot a lot of players and uh i think a lot of um ap assassins are going to be very very happy about this uh change um yeah i mean the shadow flame item is crazy right you crit people i mean like so much damage they added yeah ap kaisa with shadow flame is going to be insane yeah yeah i was playing uh i was playing this with uh akali i was just one shotting people <laughs> it was crazy I mean, you, you can build tank and akali and one shot people with that champ so yeah, I don't I don't know about that anymore. I I feel like I have a deep hatred for that champion. That's all it is. Yeah, I know. Yeah, there's yeah. no counterplay to that champ. Tank Akali, man, I used to abuse that so much. Tank Akali has not seen a good good time in a while. I, I wish, but uh, I wish I could abuse no, it. But you're anymore. the only one. You're the only one that. Would <laughs> all right, let's old, go to old Akali as a tank. Oh yeah, uh, with the point and click Q. Yep. Um, yeah, Sunfire. It's always sun, it's always been Sunfire for Akali. Sunfire, Iceborne. Yeah, that was Every good time. times. Um, let's move on to the assassin items. So I actually think that the removal of Dustblade and I mean Prowler was, was not an item anymore, but the removal of Dustblade was actually like one of the one of the biggest nerfs to it. I mean, obviously this item is crazy broken, but um, it has been noticeable how much it is missed when I've been playing um, lethality champions in, in Summoner's Rift and the PBE is like, oh, I can't pick Dustblade. I actually like can die in a team fight now uh so i think that is like one of the biggest nerfs all these other items are great but that one item getting removed is a big nerf to the role so uh but oh my god the yeah, just first impression uh, i'll let you go after i say this is that assassins do way more damage and have way less ability haste um pretty much yeah which is how it should be yeah i think so but that's uh, just straight up how it should be having having zed be a mage is kind of not balanced at all Oh yeah, I agree. It was pretty. Um, there's not a lot of counterplay to it. Getting 
AoE slowed and healed on from a mile away. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, any any of these items stick out to you? Any item you might build on an ADC? Um, you thought maybe... Yeah, there's ADC. a lot. <laughs> yeah, what, what do you think? There's a lot. that. Uh, so that Voltaic Cyclo Sword, yep. uh, I think there's a good chance that's just going to be a rush item. I think AD Carry Meta, at least for the way I'm looking at it, Samira, Jin, Draven, Lethality, Varus, Misfortune, probably Nyla for like once ever. Hmm. Um, I think those champs are probably going to be top tier. Um, I would say I could be wrong, but I think that for sure. I think the uh, Hubris item, I think it's called. Oh yeah, this item is pretty good. I yeah, like I think item. that item is going to be insane. Uh, uh, probably the opportunity item as well. Yeah. And there's also a there's also a bruiser item. Uh, that would add on to it. I think it, it the one that does the ultimate ha uh, ability haste. Oh yeah, that one. Yeah, that one's the yeah. one that was getting abused for the bug. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> um, yeah, I uh, I'll give. I think that's pretty interesting. Um, I actually, you know, weirdly enough, I when I've been playing on the PB, I bar I rarely see the new items except Hubris. Like I only see the same old items. Obviously, the meta is super unrefined and people are just picking what they know um but yeah hubris is definitely a good item like this thing lasting for 60 seconds it makes it like pseudo permanent like you just get like this is actually just a 70 to 75 ad item and which is pretty yeah. crazy um so i definitely can say that this is a very strong item um profane hydra uh is really really good i think um I, it's kind of expensive, but um, and I think it's uh, got a high skill cap in using it, but it's it's pretty good. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of assassins when they pick it up, they just they just one shot you like crazy, and uh, they snowball off of the wave clear that you get from the TMI passive. Um, and then um, they changed um, a lot of different items um, that we currently have. So Eclipse no longer gives lethality, no longer gives move speed. Um, I'm not sure if it's good. But it's not, I don't know, it's a weird item now. It just doesn't seem like it fits. That's a lot of the changes to the items that I think we're going to like notice is like they removed aspects of this item and it makes it feel like it's not, it's like a weird, it's just a weird item. Um, yeah, all right, we'll go, let's look at these tank items now. Um, honestly, I, it's, it's, uh, PBE. I don't think I've played a single tank champion <laughs> yet, and I haven't played any of the tank items. I'm pretty sure they're mega broken, though. I have seen some tanks do some ridiculous things. The main reason is you can build Jock Show and Heart Steel, and you can actually, like, if you snowball as a tank, you can get mega, mega fed. And you can stack Heart Steels, too. So if you buy two, you actually can stack them twice as fast. It's pretty crazy. Um, but I actually haven't played it. Uh, any any uh, thoughts on the tank items you got? Uh, well, I think the stacking heart steals will definitely be removed. Uh, <laughs> I, that does not make it to live. I would be blown away if it does. Um, and I think the items that were removed were probably good that they were removed. Uh, like Radiant Virtue. I mean, oh, let's yeah. be honest. No one cared about Cur Turbo Chem Tank once it became like a regular item. Stoneplate, I, I think, could have stayed, if you want to be honest. Um, and, I mean... A seeing Aegis go kind of sucks, and Life Hole Pendant, well, whatever. It was here for like six months anyways. Yep. <laughs> um, I think tanks definitely have a lot more passive damage, because it feels... I, it, it seems that... I mean, it'll depend if they stack, but I feel like they all have the Bomby Cinder passive, so... Yeah, they added a bunch of that, that stuff. I, Dude, I honestly... Like, all these items got added. I don't think I've seen these items built these three items yeah yeah these three items built a single time <laughs> and i, mean, I, I think a lot of PB. <laughs> i think if they're gonna add if they want to add like a lot more like passive damage to tanks it's fine like if they want to add more emulate or add like aoe just when you're around them yeah i think that's a good way of adding damage to tanks but when you're just then the damage from tanks is yeah they just do 12 percent of your max health for fun like orn does yeah that's when you know you get abominations like zach that you've had for the last year which is uh not fun or interactive for anyone yeah i uh i don't think they're shying away i i 
I haven't seen a lot of tanks. I fully believe that no one's playing them because they're not that interesting. There's a bunch of new fun damage items, but I do think they are broken, actually. Um, the tanks that I have seen take over every game. Like, they, they build multiple hard steals. They get, I don't know, one of the Sunfire passives, and they just never die. So we'll see how that uh, turns out. We'll see what the meta is, because people aren't tryharding on the PBE, right? So, um, but yeah, uh, tank items. And then enchanter items. I also haven't played much enchanter at all, uh, but I do know that, um, oh, it's not here. I'm pretty sure the new, they changed one of the items. I can't remember. I won't say it then. They changed one of the items that's currently in it and they changed how it works and it is broken, but I, I forget what it's called. Um, but yeah, uh, I guess not a lot of really interesting things. Do you have any comments on the enchanter items? I don't really know what to say about these guys. I think enchanter items are fine. I think there's, on, there's only one thing that they needed to do to enchanter items, which they did not do, which was give support skill reduction back. Oh yes, I don't, I don't believe they did. Oh yeah, uh, they removed Chemtech Putrefire. It's, you can only get Morellos now uh, for AP. Yeah, yeah so um, that's interesting. I wonder why they did that. Um, oh, um, yes, I do think, funnily enough, uh, I was seeing some someone do it, where Shirelia's is still really good, and Moonstone are really good, and now you can buy both. And I think that's actually the move. I think buying both is insane. Um, Probably. Yeah, yeah so uh, that, that could be interesting. But it is kind of expensive, so we'll see if anybody actually does it, but those two items are very, very good. Uh, the fighter items, uh, Sundered Sky. This item is like Divine Sunderer. It's obviously not as good as the item, but it is very good. This item is legit. This item is pretty insane. Uh, I've been seeing people buy it and, and do crazy stuff with it. It's very good. Uh, team mods back with the active. That's fun. Um, yeah, I've been playing. I've been mostly buying these items uh, in my PPE playthrough, and uh, yeah, th th they're pretty good items. <laughs> not gonna lie. So, uh, any, any thoughts? Any anything you wanted to shout out with the uh, the fighter items? Um, that Nitro Hex Aegis or whatever it was called. Yeah, yeah. That that's the item I was talking about. I mean, casting your ultimate, gain thirty five percent attack speed, fifteen percent bonus movement speed for seven seconds. Th think about like a Draven with that, or a Varus, or an Aphelios. Yeah, definitely Varus. Yeah. <laughs> that's uh, that. That's an AD carry item. It's also yeah. going to be you know Irelia, Darius, whatever. But that that's definitely gonna, I I'm pretty confident in saying that that will be abused by AD carries as well. Yeah, this item is pretty insane. The 30 ultimate ability haste is like so massive. Like obviously I was abusing the bug, but because I like saw this item so much, I got a pretty good taste of like wow, 30 ultimate ability haste is insane. Like it it makes your ultimate up so often. Um so, yeah, I think this item will be pretty good. I've been I played it a lot on Fiora and Nocturne. It was it was very good. Uh, it was very strong. <laughs> um, other items, yeah, I already talked about Hullbreaker. This item sucks. I tried to build it. It was terrible. Uh, Stridebreaker is a lot, lot worse. Like, the active not doing damage is a big deal. I think the effect is actually stronger, like, minus the damage part, because you um, gain boost C2, but um, this item is way weaker, which I think is probably a good thing. This was a pretty toxic item on, like, Darius and Garrett and stuff, so... So you said Hallbreaker feels bad, or is it bad as in, like, it's worse, or it feels worse to play against? Like, uh, it's... It's, it's just not tanky. Like, you don't get the resist. It's just... Oh, okay, just, that's good. You're just shit, yeah. I mean, also, this passive here, this basic attack thing, this thing is fucking worthless. Like, <laughs> this, this does no damage. <laughs> So I mean, I, Hullbreaker I, just should be a bad item. Like, it's it's so toxic for the game. Yeah, all it, see, it still has the, uh, you can buff the, the your cannon minion, but, I mean, the, not having the, the resist makes it so bad. It's, I think it's a really bad item. Yeah. Uh, Wit's End is interesting. It gives tenacity, but also gives the, uh, it's not 15, it actually scales. It goes up to, like, 70. It's a pretty big number, actually. Um, so this item, haven't seen anybody buy it, but I've, like, looked at it enough and been like, I feel like this is broken. I just haven't used it yet. Um, reminds me of um, that one item that gives tenacity and like move speed. Do you remember that one? Zephyr? Yeah, Zephyr. Yeah, kind of kind of similar to that. Um, the tenacity attack speed. Pretty weird ass item. Uh, Shojin. This item is definitely broken. This item is super freaking good. Uh, you can build it on assassins. Like I think um, 
you know, um, Zed, like, you know, casting, um, the casting build is kind of dead, right? You have to build lethality. But, like, if you're any other champion that was similar like that, like, I um, I was doing this on Nefiri. This item is crazy. This Spear Surgeon goes hard. Um, yeah, not surprising. It's pretty good. Um, anything else? Oh, yeah, all the component items. Like, I feel like Bruiser's, you know, they just got Christmas, right? These little uh, mini items, Tunneler, um, uh, Steel Sigil, right? Combining uh, Longsword, Cloth Armor, and Longsword, and Health, Ruby Crystal, and all these different options made it much nicer to build items as a Bruiser as well. So, you know, there you go. <laughs> um, any any other thoughts on the Bruiser items? Any, any, uh, any take impressions? No. Okay. All right. Well, uh, let's go to these marksman items. Terminus. This item is good. Uh, I built it on top lane Varus, so I was seeing people do radiant virtue top lane Varus. <laughs> uh, I played it in, in the in the current uh, patch, and then I decided to go to PBE and try it with this guy. Doing like a bruiser Varus build with this item is insane. Like I was like one v three, one v four in people. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. Yeah, this this I is said crit, crit, I think crit ADC is dead not because crit is bad but because every other item is so much better. I think like on hit or like lethality. I mean mainly lethality, but yeah, I, I can definitely see. Yeah, terminus. Terminus is what's up. I uh, I think you should definitely consider trying this item out because it gives flat armor and MR right. It's perfect for an ADC. Uh, Guardian Angel. Literally haven't seen it. Phantom Dancer, oh, okay, yeah. They did actually, so they changed actually quite a bit of the ADC items, I think. Um, you can build Infinity Edge and Navora Quick Blades together. I've never seen anybody do it, but I, I, I'm sure that's like broken somewhere. It's like, you just have to pick the right champion to do it. I feel like that is broken though. Um, but yeah, I think, I think if your first three items are Kraken Slayer, Quick Blades, and Infinity Edge, I think your damage is going to be absolutely insane. But the yeah. hard part is going to be getting to that point where Draven builds like Cry Cyclosword or whatever it was and Hubris and just one-shots you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wholesome. Uh, yeah, it's going to be... Because Lethality is so strong in the early game now that um, I do think like banking on... Um, building late game crit items for marksmen is just the the meta is so fast and snowbally um i mean that's always the preseason so things usually slow down once it goes to uh live but holy cow yeah i'd never see anybody build crit <laughs> yeah no, i think i think crit's terrible because the games we like basically my my tldr of this preseason is map different power creep went very high it went so much higher like it is, power creep has not jumped this much since season seven yeah, I think the damage got way, way higher everywhere. Yeah, there's way uh, too much damage. And I think people got squishier too. I well, besides tanks, I think tanks got kind of godlike stats, honestly, in some of the tank items. But uh, bruisers got squishier, assassins got squishier, mages got squishier, and then all the damage also increased too, right? So, I, I it's a very high damage meta. People are just yeah freaking popping everywhere i go <laughs> i'm expecting lethality adc or prob or maybe like return of mage adc but I could uh, yeah yeah but i i think crit is pretty dead until probably about a month and a half into pre-season or into the season yeah when they change things up i'm sure i'm yeah. sure they'll do some stuff yeah uh yone is the most common adc that i see when i play pbe so <laughs> I mean, he's one of the most broken champs in the game so yeah and then um yeah, he uh, he gets to play with all the tank items and the uh, crit items at the same time, right? Like, you can yep. actually build Infinity Edge and Jock Show on him. I mean, you don't do that combo together at the same time. But you, I've seen Yones with an end build where they have those two items. I'm like, huh, so this is this is what the future is, huh? <laughs> Infinity Edge and Jock Show. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, that was the we did a, a solid rundown. I gave my thoughts on the PV. You gave your thoughts on uh, the future of it. Um, a lot of ADC talk, which is great because you know you're a resident ADC. Any any final thoughts on the overall uh, 2024 season? I mean, you already gave your TLDR, but I'll give you one more chance. Tell me your thoughts, Alistair. Truthfully, aside from what I said, I don't really have any strong opinions. I don't like to form 
too many opinions before I've actually played it or experienced it myself, just because I feel like that leads to biases that can be pretty bad and can kind of screw yourself over. So I would just, you know, warn people to be hesitant and like try things out. Don't just read something and then instantly go cry to Reddit. Like you can have your pains like, oh, oh I, I think am. this item's going to be super strong, but put some time in it before you actually start to believe something like you can have an opinion but there's a difference between an opinion and a belief so i i think lethality adc is going to be better and i think i think crit is going to be dead i don't fully believe that crit is dead is the difference so i would just you know have people to remember just because something looks strong doesn't mean it always is going to be yeah you know it's good that's a hypothesis i like that but you know wait till it's proven right or wrong very mature very wise alistair you've gone you've grown very um uh... You've grown well in your old age. I uh, I approve. Uh, <laughs> well, I think that's going to do it for us on this episode of the podcast. A nice talk with Alistair. It's been a while and obviously some good thoughts on the 2024 season. And uh, yeah, Riot's got their work cut out, but uh, they gave us a lot of goodies. I'm really glad they did this, right? The, the map changes have been long, long and overdue. I'm super excited to... Uh, to see pro play and what they do with the new maps um so yeah uh try not to be too toxic we'll see you on the next episode peace